Hello and welcome to the Teach Music 21C podcast series. I'm Merlin Thompson, the creator and founder of Teach Music 21C. It's a professional development program for music studio teachers where we believe the best way to create musical success is for teachers and students to build it together. And I'm joined today by Naomi Higgins. Uh, Naomi is a graduate of the Teach Music, Cert- Teach Music 21C certification program. Welcome, Naomi. Thanks so much for having me, Merlin. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I'm just going to jump right in to ask you about your teaching and what's been your takeaway from the philosophies and strategies behind the Teach Music 21C certification program. Yeah, so um, I'm still very early in my uh, teaching career, so I definitely feel like I learned a lot from the program, Um, especially when I first started, I realized that Um, I was very much trying to prove myself and prove my own knowledge by trying to force a lot of that knowledge on my students in the classic, like, you know, in the classic master apprentice approach, um, which I very quickly realized was not a positive way to work, especially (laughs) with with younger kids. Um, So I've since learned through the program um, to collaborate with students uh, rather than try to kind of force feed them the information. Um, so uh, I've been more adjusting my curriculum to meet the students. So some of them really want the structure of a more like teacher led curriculum, while others prefer kind of 50 50. They want to learn some songs that they want to learn, but also want to work through a structured curriculum uh, alongside. And then others just want to do something completely different, right? They want to choose their songs. They want to choose their music. Um, a lot of a lot of students I've realized aren't necessarily there to really learn more. They're there to just relax into something, relax into a hobby, and have somebody to play like just play duets with and that kind of thing. So that's nice. that's been kind of something I've felt a lot freer to do since since taking the program. Um, and yeah, those those are kind of been some of my main takeaways. Wow, I appreciate that immensely because, you know, the whole picture that we have of teaching um, is really influenced by where we come from. And you brought up something really important, this whole master apprentice tradition, which has been around forever and has been yeah. very successful. But where we are today, we're looking at different avenues and there's a certain amount of growth for teachers that's 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 going on uh, because just like we become skilled at the master apprentice approach, we need to gradually get skilled at these other approaches that you mentioned the 50 50 or the students leading the way yeah those things don't take shape overnight they take black place gradually so good on you for jumping in and getting some things done yeah it's uh, it's been an interesting challenge it's certainly um it's it's the coolest thing about it is that when i'm able to let go of what i feel like i need to teach them and let the students tell me then the pressure is off right? There's, yeah. there's so much less pressure on, there's so much less preparation. I get yeah. to really communicate with the students and they get to have a bigger contribution, which makes them own, have like this bigger ownership over their own um, musical journeys, which is so cool. And then they have so much more fun, which makes me get more excited and have more fun, <laughs> which is just this beautiful feedback loop of excitement sure. and passion for music, which I yeah. think is, is what should be ultimately our goal, right? Yeah. It's like, 20 years down the line, like how many of these kids are going to be professional musicians or music teachers? Like probably not very many of them. It's more important to leave a positive impression of music and music learning, I think, than than to try and push all of this, you know, this knowledge necessarily. Right. Yeah, you've really got it because, you know, the, the whole thing about teachers trying to take charge of everything, it's just weighs on you forever. Yeah. Because they have- <laughs> The next week is, you know, half of your ideas maybe worked and half of your ideas didn't really go anywhere. And so there's always this dilemma. What am I going to do? What am I going to do to get students to respond to what I'm talking about? And the solution is stop talking. Yes. (laughs) Let the students students start talking, start listening to them. And, and, you know, it doesn't mean things don't get messy because things do get messy. But instead of one person, the teacher trying to solve all the problems, well, you've actually got two people looking at situations, seeing where the value is, seeing where you want to step in and fix things, and even seeing where you want to maybe just, oh, that route wasn't actually all that interesting. And I maybe that route isn't the one that I wanted to take after all. It was good that right. we went right. down that avenue to find out what's there. Yeah. But now that we know it's not that interesting when you get there, yeah, we're going to go over somewhere else and try that instead. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, the most successful uh, uh, lessons I've had have been the ones rooted in student interest or the ones where I've collaborated the most. Like one of my most successful um, games that I've been able to come up with happened because of challenges with a student. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a lot of like trying to get the student to focus. And it was really challenging, even in in-person lessons. This was during the days of COVID when online was also pretty common. So it was yeah. really a struggle. Um, but together we developed a game called the interval game. And it was just based off of reacting to what each other was playing on the piano with actions. And, and through that and through collaborating with that student and finding something that we could do that was still like rooted in, in some, you know, some form of education while also, you know, listening and music. And it was, it was this beautiful growth of this game that I just, I collaborated with the student to make it happen. And it was, it just, it still blows my mind. And I'll always remember that student when I play that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting how that game gets passed on to other students then too. Yes. So what was an inspiration from one student becomes that, oh, maybe I'll just take that over here and see where we get to it. And so the game takes on this, um, what can I say? variety of, of of circumstances that it's going to be applicable to yeah. a variety of ways that it's going to turn out uh, yeah. varieties yeah. of ways varieties i would say also of intensity of how much to certain students will contribute other students will do something a little bit different so good on you for for just taking that on and being creative and allowing students to bring in those tools it sounds really great Oh, it's, it's so much fun. It's just, it's so much more fulfilling as a teacher to work this way as well, because the students get so much more involved. And then of course, as the game moves between different students, those students also have an impact on how the game changes or yeah. different ways of how I can play the game, right? Like some students, I, I well, most of the time I, I introduce it like a game show, which is super fun. I've got a little theme song that I do on the piano and it's, it's really fun. Students love it, but some students will assign different actions to different intervals, right? I'll often uh, imply a specific um, uh, cause I usually play just like a little beginning of a, of a bit of a song and then, you know, to, to help them get more context for the interval and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see it kind of evolve and, and other things aside from just that game as well, like giving students the opportunity, just like two or three minutes at the beginning of a class. And I think I actually got this idea from another one of my students, another one of, um, sorry, your students in the, uh, in the class, uh, in the, in the class that I was in, um, to give them an opportunity to just make up their own song on the spot, just basic improvisation, often with no other context. Um, and some students really thrive on that and just like playing crazy sounds on the piano. Sometimes they play with, like I've got a keyboard that I teach from here when I teach piano and sometimes they'll change the sound of the piano and play, you know, sometimes they'll play every single note in a row going up or going down, you know, and I'll say, oh, it's time yeah. for the grand finale and they'll do something crazy for the grand finale. And others really come up with interesting melodies or or decide oh i've been i want to show you this cool thing that i that i this really neat note pattern that i figured out and and these kinds of things and sometimes we end up composing a little song together which is really cool it's interesting to see all the different approaches yeah yeah and so you've moved from a a single teacher approach to actually a community approach is what you've got going on absolutely and yeah, and so the number of solutions that you're going to come up with, well, no, I won't say that. The number of solutions that are available, the number of directions that are available is just multiplied by everybody in your studio. So yeah. rather than this situation of you having to come up with all the solutions, all the directions to take, try them out, maybe they work, maybe they don't. Now you've got all these variables. You've got a community that's multiplying within itself. It sounds really great. Congratulations. It sounds Thank wonderful. you. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work, but it is It is a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 I get, I get the feeling you finish the end of the day and you go, oh, okay. That was <laughs> all really, that was a lot of work, but we got a lot done. I feel good about it as opposed to, yeah. oh, that was a lot of work. I'm exhausted. I don't know how I can possibly do this again tomorrow. So yes. that's a completely different, you know, trajectory day after day, week after yeah. week for sure. Yeah. It's a different kind of tired for sure. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely a more positive kind of tired it's um it's a beautiful thing as well to be able to empower students to teach themselves like there's there's this element that i never you know there's there's, there's a part of being a music teacher that you want to feel like you're needed because that's mm -hmm. you know you 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 your job is literally to guide students and so right. to let go of that need and to try to teach the students to teach themselves and take on responsibility themselves is is, is really challenging but 
it's it's also super duper freeing. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the whole thing behind Teach Music 21C is that we're redefining what teachers do. Yeah. And, and you said something re really just important right here that there, well, there was a time when we thought the teacher was supposed to do everything. Yeah. And the teacher was responsible for everything, coming up with everything, all those kinds of things. And it's exhausting. And I don't know how teachers put up with it for so long, but <laughs> but so here we are now. We we're gonna we're gonna redefine that that the teacher is for sure the person who is passing on skills and knowledge, but yeah. it's also the person who's collaborating and knows how to collaborate create really well. Knows what the language is to do that because yeah. there's a special yeah. kind of language. It's like, can you have invitations on a weekly basis as opposed to telling people what to do on a weekly basis? It's completely right. Completely right. Effort. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that might be a great place to kind of wrap things up here then today. Uh, I'm Nolan Thompson. I've been here with Naomi Higgins. Uh, she's a recent graduate of the Teach Music 21C certification program. We've been talking about how the role of the teacher is shifting in this, uh, I'll call it 21st century. We're, we're diving into 21st century tools and strategies. They're different from what we've used before. We're not throwing out everything that we did before, but we're definitely going to add on some new things. So Naomi, thanks so much for being with us today. Of course. Thanks so much for speaking with me today, Merlin. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. And for everybody who's listening in or watching in today, thanks for being part of the uh, Teach Music 21C podcast series. I'm Merlin Thompson. I've been here with Naomi Higgins. Uh, we're going to get her back on another occasion sometime in the future. And until then, uh, we'll hope to see you again. Thanks so much for joining and bye-bye for now.